Hi YouTube. So here we have the undercarriage for our Volvo excavator. Uh, today I was thinking we would uh, cut the chains so that we can mount our tracks. Also, uh, cutting the chains will give me an overview of how many track plates I have to print. So let's get to work. Now, before I cut the chains, I actually have to mount up these uh, track tensioners. So I have to cut a couple of threaded rods so I can insert these with some springs. And this will help keep tension on the tracks. So let's do that first. So these are the springs that will actually uh, give tension to the tracks. Uh, I've already uh, designed a few holes here to put these into. This is the track tensioner itself. It goes into this slot right here it won't be able to move up and down or sideways and then it hits these and will put tension on the tracks now I'm going to insert a few bearings in these idle wheels and they will go into these holes right here So there's the track tensioners in place. Uh, before I start cutting the chain uh, to adjust the length, I should probably mount all the rollers, both on the top and underneath. As you can see, there's missing a few rollers here. <laughs> so we're going to do that now. our rollers uh, these are bearings and I 3d printed a spacer in between them so the the chains will roll on these so our next step would be to put on the top rollers right here I 3d printed uh, these uh, guide uh, wheels if you can call them that I'll show you how I assemble this I put a bearing on each side of them and then in theory this will guide the, the chains in the correct line. But first I have to drill uh, some bigger holes and they're a bit small.
So, hopefully the chain will roll on top of these and stay in place. Now everything should be ready to mount uh, the chains. So, I'm going to try to figure out just how long the chain is going to be. And then we're going to cut two lengths of it. So now we have figured out uh, how long the chain links are going to be. So we will cut two of them. So that's the first uh, link cut. It's actually the long one that I gotta use. So the, when I cut it in half, this part is actually uh, too short. Uh, luckily I have a few chain links at my disposal. So I'll just add this one to this. So it should all be okay. I have to cut this one right here though. I'll do that now. Now we should have two links at the same same length. Um, I'm gonna have to force this one back. So let's do that. In order to mount the chains up or join them together, I'm going to use these locks. Uh, let me put on the lights. Yeah. I'm going to use these locks. Uh, you have this spring here. But first, uh, I think I'm going to mount the sprockets. Uh, and fasten them to the motors because I have to test if the tracks run okay and everything so let's go ahead and mount these brackets before we begin with the with the trains so <clears throat> when I mount the sprocket uh, let me see if I can, there we go <clears throat> I made a hole here so that when I mount the sprocket you can see the the mounting holes of the set screws right here they will actually go in this uh, hole so I can't uh, tighten the screw unless I have a hole so that's why I made a hole there to tighten the set screw
chain is mounted things are looking good let's mount the other one I seem to have cut myself somewhere uh, I don't know when that happened but anyway I thought I should show you how these locks work they are pretty easy to use so let me just zoom in so let's see this is where it goes see now this piece is like this you take it inside this one and then inside this one like so then you put this one on there and then you have this spring loaded ro uh, lock that you just slide in there now you have to use pliers to to lock it in place Alright, so with both chains in place, I'm going to put this uh, chassis on something and test the motors and see if everything runs alright. So let's just use this one. Okay, let's find a battery. So here I have... I have hooked up the battery uh, just to test the motors and see if everything stays in place and works. So far it looks looks really good. And here's the other side. Uh, this side doesn't seem to run as smooth as the other one for some reason. So I'm going to just have a quick look at that and I'll be back soon. So after fiddling around for a bit I found out that the chains are rubbing against the chassis right here. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, this will wear down eventually. So I'm just going to let it be at the moment and Hopefully everything will be all right. Okay, so now that everything is uh, assembled on the undercarriage, I can begin 3D printing the track pads that go on the chains. And I need 90 of them. Uh, there's 45 on each side. So I better start my printers. Now I'll end this video right here. Uh, on the next video I will assemble the track plates and pr probably start painting the undercarriage and then we can begin uh, assembling the overcarriage um, and hopefully have an excavator very soon. See you next time. Bye -bye.